Hello and welcome to Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. I'm Brandon. I'm Michael. And we are talking high proof and high heat. We are a bourbon and baseball podcast, but we're going with a rye whiskey today for our whiskey review. You can find us right here on YouTube, BNB Bourbon. But also, if you're looking for baseball content, we're on YouTube at Barrels and Barrels Pod. We've got two different channels now. We're trying to put out two different types of content, try to appease everybody. But we're talking both of our loves, American whiskey as well as American baseball. Right. High proof and high heat. High proof and high heat. Um, first off, this brought to you by Whiskey Towers. Go to whiskeytowers.com. Use promo code WHISKEYWEATHER, all caps, for 10% off your order. If you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing the video of what a Whiskey Tower actually is. For those of you listening on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, iHeartRadio, as well as Google Podcasts, these Whiskey Towers are like the coolest thing you're ever going to see. The beer tap for your everyday bourbon. That's right. You take your bourbon, you twist it upside down. Put in the tap, and now you got a tapper to fill up your glass of whiskey to however much you want. Maybe you're making a cocktail, uh, one of those bottles that you like to say you go to every day. Is it easy to, to change them out? Like if you had different company coming over, you could put some DFAs in there real quick? <laughs> you and... have to drain the bottle. You can't flip it because once it flips upside down, it starts to... Hey, but it's easy just to refill it in. Yeah, yeah. Just pour sure. it out. Yeah. Pour it out and fill it back in. Find another bottle, pour it in. But yes, use promo code WhiskeyWeather at WhiskeyTowers.com for 10% off your order. This whiskey review is not a bourbon. As I mentioned, it's going to be a rye whiskey coming from Still Austin. We did a Still Austin cask strength bourbon review a couple weeks ago on one of our podcasts. This is the cask strength rye. First off, want to thank Still Austin for sending this our way. Oh, yeah. Thank uh, you. They heard our last podcast, enjoyed it. So they wanted to hear our thoughts on the cast strength rye. We always say we give out our honest opinion. We've had bourbon sent to us by companies that we are like, yeah. Sorry. It's missing something. It's missing or, something. Or it's fantastic. Yeah, right. either, either way. So we're, we're going to give you our honest opinion one way or the other. Um, just wanted you to know that this was sent to us from Still Austin. Uh, but they're not paying us for this or anything along those notes as well. So this is a, a rye whiskey. Age two years. How rye? Hundred percent rye. Hundred percent rye. Hundred percent rye. Hundred percent from Texas. So hundred percent Texas rye. Huh. Uh, from Texas. Mike sure. has got a little bit of a, I'd say, a bias against Texas whiskey. Some of the some of the Texas bourbons I've had or whiskey has just been so peanutty, and I think that's what they pride themselves yeah. on is the peanutty of that's Texas bourbon. I could be wrong, but that's. So I got this bottle last week. And look how much is gone already. Who have you been drinking with, Brandon? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> so as we dive into this, this is 65 bucks um, on their website. It's already sold out. This is a relatively new release, I believe, within the last month, month and a half. Um, this whiskey comes in at 116 proof, cask strength. 100% of that is rye, and it's 100% from Texas. Of course, Nancy the Nose Fraley. Nancy the Nose. Um, is who helped blend this and put this together. Whatever she touches is like liquid gold. Yeah. So, um, I mean, she, did she do the... She uh, did the, the, the bourbon and she's done the rye. It's off the nose. Oh, man, it's it's really good. I get like, um, I like to say I get Texas cactus almost. Like it's got like an aloe. It does. Like nose to it to me, but it's like a... Like a jelly yeah. kind, of, kind of feel. But not in a bad way. Like a very uh, aromatic... It's it's got a lot of aromas. I don't get the nose spice, the out of the rye spice right. on the nose, like slapping me in the face, right. like I would think for hundred percent rye. But yeah, um, get some um, almost gingerbread. You think so? I got a little gingerbread cookie. I really like, like that cactus. cactus like a mentioned. cactus gingerbread. It sounds like two different things. Like that would. Really not much, but someone, I get a little bit of both. If someone's a baker and wants to make make us some cactus gingerbread cookies, <laughs> we'll comp we would love to compare it against this bourbon here. Whiskey, rye whiskey. whiskey excuse we, me. We, we had bourbon earlier. <laughs> and then look at this pour here. Right, Three yeah. Fingers I kind of went here. a little heavy handed on that. Off the nose, I mean, it smells fantastic on the nose. It smells sweet, actually. It's a got bit. a very sweet, like I said, it's cactusy to me, and that's not a bad thing. Like it's just different, right? You, it's a different nose and a different pour than what you would normally be getting. You get watermelon on this guy? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, take, what's that? What's that first sip there for you? It's good. Um, 
It's got enough of the tingle right off the bat. I don't think you're overpowered Ooh. by rye. Is it doesn't seem rye y to me. No, that was great. Uh, very silky, and like it's a smooth. I hate using that word, but like for 116 proof and and being in 100 rye. rye, you would expect there to be a bite, or even like. It doesn't even dry out like a lot of rye do. Like I get a lot of that drier on the back of like the palate. I don't get that with this. I, again, gingerbread. I feel like that dude, that one dude, Ryan, right here. I'm just constantly nodding my head here. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Going back for more. Yeah, it's like a cinnamon gingerbread. It reminds me a little bit of Christmas. You get some oak on this guy at all? Oh, definitely oak. Mm -hmm. It's only two years, too, that, but they say in Texas it's like four to five years for every year. In four the, to five for yeah, every year? because of the Texas heat and the lack of humidity in a lot of these spots. It ages a lot quicker. Oh, three, yeah. That's in Colorado, but they don't get the intense heat like they would in Texas or even in Georgia or Alabama, where I think they say in Georgia it's around four and a half to five. So I'm going to say this drinks more like a nine-year-old whiskey. For and Even though it's only two years. No, it, yeah. it drinks fantastic. I get oak. Um, man, I, it's got like a the tongue um, finish. Like this, this almost tastes like toasted, like a toasted a whiskey. Bit. Yeah. The uh, like the nose is great. At, at first, when I first took a first sip, it tasted just like the nose, and then that sweetness came through. And I was just waiting for the bite, and the bite never happened. It yeah, was just not, sweetness through. There's enough of the rye that you get the tingle. And maybe a little bit of a white pepper, but I don't think it's that like harsh pepper that a lot no. of ryes can have. This is what rye drinkers pride themselves on. Is, this stuff, yeah. Yes, is the way this tastes. So I think I got gingerbread. Um, so on the notes from Nancy, she says cherry cobbler with a cinnamon crust. Candy ginger or lemon peels. There you go. Apricots. I can get some apricot. Apricot strudel coffee cake. Um, Sounds good. Palette yeah. grilled peaches with mint ice cream. I do get some mint. Yes. Mint ice cream. Um, right. Apple and marzipan dumplings and gingerbread cookies with lemon zest. Man, look at the guy there. Baking spices in brown butter, muddled cherries, and mint leaves for the finish. And I would 100%. I was thinking like a buttery, like I have butter on the nose. Yeah, that's we're good. Okay. <laughs> um, and if you'd like a was that just Karen, nose or just all <laughs> that was all that was nose palette and finish oh okay I and I was just nose I was like my these are some nose <laughs> yeah. these are some uh, nose notes I get the cobbler like I can like the butteriness like I get some baking butter right like you can just like when something's made with a lot of butter we talk about like the, how how it fills our mouth yes. and what kind of level is it oily is it syrupy um, I would say this is neither of those this is buttery buttery and it's like a sweet butter not like a, an unsalted butter like that you would just take a regular not that you're taking bites that's what i was saying butter. i was like i mean i've seen <laughs> well, those you that. <laughs> i've seen those videos of people critiquing like did she really just eat a stick of butter but so on our podcast rating scale we go from top of the top that is hall of fame we have yet to rate a whiskey or a bourbon at a hall of fame level but think of it baseball wise we do a baseball rating scale since we're a bourbon and baseball podcast Hall of Fame is the best it gets. Then from there, it's all-star. You've got all-stars every day. Sometimes you have all-stars on your shelf. Then behind that, you've got everyday players. It's a player that you have every day in your lineup. You know he's going to come in and give you consistent effort, right? Day in and day out, you know what you're getting. Poor to poor, player to player, and then bench player. Uh, a lot of people think that'd be a knock, but if you're a bench player in the major leagues, you're a good baseball player. You're still a good baseball player. I mean... You're not DFA'd. You're right. still on the team. You you have your strengths. Even if you're never an everyday player and you're still that bench guy, it could be a dessert bourbon. It could be just something that is a high proof or, uh, I already said dessert bourbon. But... Yeah, or it, it mixes it up. It's not something you're going to every day. But think about some of the best pinch hitters like a Lenny Harris or a Daryl Ward, David Bodie back a couple of years ago with the Cubs. But there's always some guy who is always ready to come off the bench and do something in the clutch. And I, I think that's what we generally go to with our bench pours is that's something that you're going to go to maybe once a month, maybe once every other week. 
uh, something along those lines. It's not something that you go to every do- every time you go to pour or something. But it, when you're looking for something different, and then finally, I like to call him Mikey, Mr. DFA. Sir, can you come take a seat here, please? Um, your your abilities are no longer needed. You need to pack your bags and empty your locker, and you've been DFA. You've been designated for assignment. So designated for assignment means you're cut. You're gone. You're off the team. Uh, Gary Sanchez had that earlier. Josh Donaldson, Randall Gritchick. Uh, multiple players get DFA'd every year. Sometimes they re-sign right back with the team. That's not the case here. If you're getting DFA whiskey, that's one of those that you're giving to your friends to drink. That's something you're cooking with, or in the worst case scenario, you're pouring it down the drain. So on our Barrels and Barrels of Bourbon and Baseball podcast rating scale, I'll go first this time. I'm going to rate this an all-star. I think that this is a fantastic pour for 65 bucks. It gets you everything you want. We're talking the nose is great. The palate is good. I haven't had a sip. I've been talking a lot here in the last three minutes. I haven't had a sip, (laughs) and my mouth still has that tingle, the flavor. I can still feel the presence of the whiskey and even like it's 116 proof it doesn't drink like 116 but i still have that i can tell i drank proof high proof. right um overall i think from top to bottom if i had to change something maybe a little bit sweeter on the palate I that's think- probably the one thing that takes it to a hall of fame level for me but i think right now if they toasted this, oh. that's what you'd get right there. If this yeah. was a toasted catch drink rye, this would be not home run right here. Yeah, uh, that'd be a Grand Slam <clears throat> Hall of Famer. But I'm going all-star. Where do you have it? Um, I'm I'm thinking right along the same lines. Um, I'm trying to decide. The fact, this is, this is a 100% rye. 100% rye, 100% from texas so all the grains came from texas it was aged in texas grown distilled all of that the front the very front of it is that sweetness and then the rye flavor the mint kind of comes through at the end i'm fighting myself between on on two levels here and is it going to be i i think i'm going to go for the fact that this is a, a rye, I'm still going to go all-star, I think, as well. All right. I think it's still an all-star. Um, I was fighting between, from an everyday player. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, um, because it was the 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 rye-ness to me. Yeah. But it's still delicious. I would never recommend going, if you're going to do a tasting, to mix rye in. I did right. that last weekend where I went from something sweet, sweeter, right. bourbon, to a rye. Terrible move. Terrible move. The rye comes out so much more. But again, this rye does not bite. This rye does not overpower the whole thing. Even though it's 100% rye. 100% rye. It's still sweet. It's got a great flavor. It's, it's, it roller coasters a little bit in the beginning. Um, this is a good pour. Uh, it's a great pour. Um, I went with all-star on this. You went with an all-star. You also all-starred the cast strength bourbon. I have declared it. So now that we have the ratings and we have both the bottles, I would like to do a quick. Didn't didn't I just say never go from (laughs) from one to the other? I certainly did. You certainly did. But and these are in our wisdom glass. Yeah, wishy wisdom wisdom glass. glass. So you can go grab these on our Instagram page. Go to at barrels and barrels pod, and in the link tree in our bio, we have glassware for sale. We've got the hats that we're wearing for sale. I had a T-shirt on earlier. Uh, that's our Barrels and Barrels t-shirt. You can find that at Charlie Mike Number Weekend. We're both wearing a w- walk-off walk-offs and, and whiskey shirt. So that. cheers, walk-offs and whiskey. He's he's been looking for some uh, some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your models. Um, so we just did the ride. I poured us a little bit of the cast strength bourbon. <laughs> this tastes like this smells like so fruity and yeah, almost like a smoothie. Yeah. What's it, this proofage on this guy? So. This comes in at 118 proof. This was 116. So we went with the rye to start. We're going with the bourbon to finish. So on the nose, it, to me, it's not as... No, it's not as pronounced. No, I think... Go back and forth, and this guy tastes like it came out of the garage almost. Or not tastes like, but smells like okay. in comparison. Now, we, we all start, I all started this yes. uh, just recently. Uh, but on the nose, the rye kicks its butt. 
Yeah, the nose on the rye is far superior in my mind. It's almost it almost smells a little dusty. I'm, right? I'm, not, I'm not trying to knock it at all, but just no. comparing the two. And we like the bourbon. We like it. Like really like it. I I went when I went to a uh, a whiskey fest. There's 50 whiskeys, and I walked away buying the bur- cash strength bourbon. It's still good. It's, it's still good, but comparing the nose is a little different but finally diving in into the mouth into the mouth feel i think the bourbon's a little harsher on the back end which would be is surprising for right. comparing 100 percent rye it almost has and maybe because i don't like pineapple <laughs> yeah. it's got a pineapple taste on the back a bromine uh, yeah like it's sweet up front and then it like gets pineapple like what did you rate it? I rated it an everyday player. It's still a good pour. And I think the only reason is it's tainted by a, this rye is so good that I think it makes, obviously you're comparing apples to oranges here. Right, for sure. But it's coming from the same company. And usually people say that they like bourbon better than rye. And this, this I wanted to prove that that's not always the case. I think I'm going more so for the rye in this case. I'd still, I'd still go for still the bourbon. Go for the bourbon. Mm-hmm. So, and again, that's what makes this so fun and so cool. Is like I prefer this bottle, you prefer this, but you rated both of them all stars. I, I rated this an all star. You and this an everyday player. Everyday players a hell of a ranking. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're an everyday player in baseball, you're making a pretty good career. And yeah, uh, the, even though this is is a rye, I'm, I'm, it, it's still a great pour. It's got a great flavor flavor profile um yeah see so you have to sw- the rye is sweeter to me i wouldn't it it's completely different sweet right. this is a fruity dark cherry kind of sweet and this is like a, a baking sweet a baking brown sugar kind of sweet for sure that's definitely the distinguishing factors there the bourbon drinks a little bit hotter it is too too, what, pr- too proof, too proof. is that the term you say too proof it's one percent abv how about that? Yeah, one <laughs> percent alcohol. Yeah, alcohol by volume higher. Which I just read the other day. <clears throat> Legally, that's all you have to put on the bottle. Is that proof you don't have to put on the bottle? But oh, they just right. do it nowadays because it's like uh, people can't do math. Well, people can't do math, but also like it's like a, a nostalgic thing. Just like, like the, having the the DSP number. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. Uh, you might have to have the DSP number on it if you have one. Uh, I thought it's only is I it only not. Kentucky? Uh, no, it, I guess it's state by state, but I guess you don't have to DSP because they don't have a DSP on these bottles. Um, but that has been another episode of Barrels and Barrels, a Vernon Baseball podcast. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. You can find us anywhere. Just type in Barrels and Barrels Pod. Look for us on YouTube, Barrels and Barrels Pod, but also Bourbon page is BNB Bourbon. That's a newer page. We're trying to get that started up. More so for our bourbon and whiskey lovers rather than just the fans of baseball who you might yeah. be a college football kind of guy right. or or football yeah. or soccer, you know, kind of person. Uh, and I've bourbon. just got I've just gotten a lot of um, feedback that like some people are baseball fans and they don't really want to hear about the bourbon. Some people are bourbon fans and like I could care less about the baseball. So we're trying to split it up. <laughs> yeah, it's I understand it's to each their own, but uh, and we also have some viewers and listeners who are underage. So the whiskey portion of that doesn't really fit their realm. So we've got to split it up a little bit. But thank you to everybody for your support. Go check out Still Austin. I'm not saying that because they sent us the bottle. I bought this first bottle, and that's actually the one that I didn't think was as good as the one that was sent to me. But Michael likes them both. I love them both. I would buy each of these day in and day out. I think they're 55 and 60. Uh, for that price point, that I, price point, I recommend picking it up. I would grab one of each if you can find them. Honestly, because uh, you're probably walking out the door $125 after tax for both of them, where some bottles are $120 and they don't even live up to that. We're in allocation season, right? That's the one thing is a lot of people think it's allocated. It must be great. Not no. the case. Nope. But check us out. Uh, you're listening potentially on Apple, Spotify, as well as iHeartRadio, Google, and um, what's that Amazon. One? Amazon. There we go. Amazon's Man. got everything. Amazon's got everything. But I am Brandon. That is Michael Burns. We are, barrels Michael. And barrel bur- we are Barrels and Barrels of Bourbon and Baseball Podcast in person together. Are you going to punch me? For one of the first time. No, I'm no, not okay. going to punch you this time. <laughs> 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 but don't forget to check us out on YouTube. We talk high proof. 
We did it today. High proof, high heat. Multiple burns take us away. Let's go. Oh,